In front of us today is the ritual weapon for Season of the Worthy, Point of the Stack. And this is a combat bow. And yes, I am calling it the ritual bow because that's what people are saying. I know it's the Iron Banner related weapon, but it's being speculated right now. Then instead of us getting three ritual weapons from Strikes, Gambit, and Crucible, it's now converged into one from Iron Banner. I have no way to confirm that. Now to get this bow, you have to actually pick up the quest from Saladin, complete it. And it's when you get to like the fourth step, I think it's the fourth step, when you have to get bow kills that the point of the stack actually drops in your inventory now this is a static roll bow can't get random rolls on it but i will say based on the static rolls this is about as good as it gets i mean it actually is really really good disregard some of the gameplay i am not a bow user by the way so first up intrinsically point of the stack here is a precision frame bow meaning compound bow longer draw time optimized for damage you can also cancel your shot by hitting reload even while the bow is drawn now our first bowstring perk allows Plastic string. This actually drops our accuracy there, but it gives us an increase there in draw time. Also slightly increases our handling speed. We also have an arrow perk of natural fletching. And that's pretty much it in terms of what's affecting the draw time. The masterwork is accuracy. Nothing else is driving down our draw time, but even still, we have a draw time of 612, which is pretty nice. For a compound bow, a precision frame bow, that's kind of where I like to sit. Now our trade combination, and again, this is what makes these bows or these weapons called ritual weapons, because supposedly we get a combination of perks that you have not seen before on a bow. So we have no distractions. Aiming this weapon for a short period reduces the flinch underneath it is archer's tempo draw time decreases after every precision shot a fantastic perk guys for both pvp and pve on the final column we have vorpal weapon increased damage against bosses vehicles and guardians with their super active pretty nice matter of fact you can two shot just about any super with vorpal weapon if they're crit shots and you can three body shot any super with something like vorpal weapon now underneath vorpal is eye of the storm the weapon becomes more accurate and boosts handling as your health gets lower this is when i feel like a pinnacle perk could have been thrown in there and i'm not gonna get into it if this could have been a pinnacle perk imagine another take on eye of the storm that not only boosts your accuracy as your health got lower but boosts that draw time i'm just saying it would have been nasty but just this bow all on its own with this plus 10 and accuracy added to it that 612 draw time how does it perform? I was actually really impressed with it. I'm not much of a bow user. I actually use bows more inside of PvE than inside of PvP. But inside of PvP, I actually thought it was a phenomenal feeling bow. Now, like most precision frame bows, it hits a healthy damage value of 151 per crit shot and 101 damage per body shot inside of Crucible. Now, granted, that is at the perfect draw. Now, should we categorize this bow as a ritual weapon? Well, the layout of the traits definitely makes it that having something like vorpal weapon on it as well is also pretty neat also eye of the storm is another perk that we have not seen on a bow before so there is a lot of uniqueness here no it's not pinnacle but it's definitely in that territory of being a ritual weapon now the perk combinations that we were shooting for i actually think archer's tempo is hands down the way to go i know it has no distractions which we've seen that perk on many other weapons and yes it pretty much makes that flinch non-existent and i definitely don't want to overlook it the problem is is that if I was to start aiming down sights with the bow and start to draw at the same time, there will be a slight delay before no distraction actually activates, thus resulting in me losing out on damage because I'm not getting that perfect draw. Now, vice versa, if you happen to be aiming down sights with your bow, then all of a sudden you finally see an enemy, then you're going to have to sit there and wait for yourself to completely draw the bow back to then begin shooting, which can result in either A, the opponent not even being there in front of you when you finally repeat. Or B, the opponent just pushes up on you and kills you by the time you get the draw. So sitting there trying to fumble no distractions on a bow is just not there for me, man. I think there's a possibility you can make this work with certain exotics, maybe something like Knucklehead Radar. But as far as my experience goes, utilizing Archer's Tempo was definitely the way to go. Now, Vorpal and Eye of the Storm both have their benefits. Vorpal actually allows you to one-shot certain supers, of course, when combined with certain elements. So I actually had less here, pop a golden gun, and I wasn't quite able to kill him with one crit, but when combined with say like an empowering rift or pretty much any buff at all, 
when paired with Vorpal Weapon, will allow us here to one bang Golden Guns. So yes, Vorpal does add a little bit of value there. On top of that, there were times when I was going up against supers that even if I didn't get the one bang, the ability to tag them once or twice in a team shot scenario, that extra damage from this bow was extremely beneficial. On top of that, Eye of the Storm was not a perk I was really able to utilize all that much. By the time Eye of the Storm procs here on this bow, for me, I rarely was able to take advantage of it. I would re-peak again. Say, for instance, I was close to dying to take advantage of that boost in accuracy from Eye of the Storm, and I would die. It's not like other weapons. We've reviewed things like Eye of the Storm on hand cannons and such, which is really nice because in 1v1 scenarios, especially against other good players, your health is going to drop to a point that you'll be close to dying, especially with three tap hand cannons. And in that moment, having something to boost that accuracy when you're already dealing with flinch and everything else is extremely beneficial. Bows is a different animal because it's like one of those things where the style of them just in general is kind of awkward inside of Crucible. And the only way you can really benefit from using a bow is when you actually pair it with other weapons in the game. Maybe a quick swap to a sidearm or an opening shot hand cannon paired with lucky pants, etc. There's a lot of different variations there for that quick swap and the immediate damage get off from a second weapon. The problem with Eye of the Storm that is present here on this bow is that it only really benefits you if you are holding the bow out there and maining it and not actually swapping to another weapon. So again, Eye of the Storm for me was just kind of more or less working against my playstyle. And I found just relying on Vorpal weapons, something like 6v6, when I know supers are about to pop and just backing up and popping some shots off in a team shot engagement seemed to really benefit my team. But I will say, depending on either one of those traits, it's going to really come down to you and your playstyle. If you're using bows like most people, which is just to drive an initial shot of damage, into your opponent to then immediately swap to a secondary weapon, Eye of the Storm may not be the trait for you because nine times out of 10, you won't be re-peaking with the bow anyways. You'll be cleaning up with whatever weapon you're using alongside your bow. Now, despite this bow being a bow from Iron Banner, don't overlook it, guys. This may actually be one of the best bows to use inside of PvE for two big reasons. Number one, bows just in general are one of the best weapons to bring inside of in-game activities. I used to bring them all the time into Nightfall or deals when we would make actual nightfall guides and the lethality that bows bring against high health targets was fantastic no they're not the best weapons when it comes to clearing out mass ads but in those in-game activities that's not what you really need what you need is something that's got some meat behind it and i'm happy to say point of the stack here has a lot of meat behind it for the longest time this subtle calamity right here was my baby i masterworked it it has a 612 draw time very similar in just about every facet to point of the stack the difference point of the stack here has slightly better stats outside of accuracy but the biggest kicker in high-end PV activities is Vorpal Weapon, as it not only benefits us against bosses, vehicles, and guardians with their super active, but somehow champions are also thrown into that mix. Pretty much just about every yellow bar out there, it will do extra damage to them. Now, I don't know the method to the madness. Champions are a little funkier. For Greg here, Vorpal Weapon was actually giving us a 15% increase there in damage. Inside of Crucible, we actually gain close to 20%. It's like 19.8% extra damage for Vorpal Weapon. Weapon. And for champions, at least this unstoppable, we were doing about 8% more damage with Vorpal Weapon. So again, guys, just because this bow comes from Iron Banner, do not overlook it. It's got some fantastic static traits combined with Vorpal Weapon that allows us to do increased damage against champions as well as many other things inside of PvE. The only downside is that it's not last season, and unfortunately we don't have things like anti-barrier rounds for our bows. But there are other ways to stun those champions through those artifact mods, and during that time, frame you could be utilizing something like pointing the stack here tacking on that extra eight percent more damage against those champions which is extremely beneficial so guys that is pointing the stack i've been very impressed with this bow all around for both pvp and pve i think it's a great villain bow and i play with a lot of bows some bows have good damage but they feel terrible they feel sluggish other bows are quick and they got that draw time but they got terrible target acquisition pointing the stack here seems to be the perfect middle ground between both of those just like it's the perfect bow for either pvp or PVE. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.